Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we have an informative video for you. This is kind of like a frequently asked questions. And it is things to know before building your first gaming PC or if you're an avid builder, things that you can watch out for in the future. Building PCs is pretty straightforward, but there are little things here and there that could throw a wrench in your perfect gaming PC build. And we're going to tell you about those. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Deepcool and their PQM series of power supplies ranging from 650 to 1000 watts. Today we have the PQ1000M which is a 1000 watt 80 plus gold certified power supply based on the Seasonic Focus platform and uses a low noise high quality FDB fan and includes a 10 year warranty along with a fully modular design making it an all around great option for your next gaming PC build. Check the link in the description down below to learn more and special thanks again to deep cool for sponsoring today's video so first up we're going to talk about compatibility this one is very simple but there are different layers of compatibility that as a first time builder you might not consider first one the obvious the motherboard if you're going with a intel cpu you gotta make sure you get an intel motherboard if you're going with an amd cpu you gotta make sure you're going with an amd motherboard that one's obvious but now there is ddr5 memory ddr4 memory you gotta know which ram works with which motherboard and which cpu so for example 12th gen intel is out now and there are some ddr5 motherboards but there's also DDR4 motherboards. So you gotta make sure you don't buy a DDR4 board and buy DDR5 or vice versa. That's another compatibility thing you need to consider when building a newer gaming PC. And then you just gotta make sure that the motherboard, even if it is for AMD, is actually compatible for that CPU. You can't buy a really old second or third gen Intel CPU and throw in a brand new like Z690 motherboard. While that's really stupid an example, you really just can't even do that because they're not on the same chipset. And if you are gonna go with AMD, which is a very good example of that, you wanna make sure that the BIOS is updated because there's some older motherboards that won't work with newer Ryzen CPUs even though it physically fits. So yeah, that's a lot to basically take in, but that's a general synopsis of compatibility that you need to consider. And maybe McAllister would put a little checklist right here and we're gonna freeze for a second so y'all can just stare at that. Like that, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> now going off of the topic of CPUs, this is a really big one and that is CPU coolers. So a lot of CPUs come with stock coolers that of course are going to be the proper mounting and everything and they'll fit in pretty much anything. They're really small, they have low clearance. So clearance and everything's not an issue, but obviously there's a lot of CPUs that don't come with coolers and there's a lot of CPUs that well, you just don't want to use a stock cooler because they don't perform well and they just don't look good. So number one thing to think about is the size of the cooler. Does it fit in the case? If you're getting an air cooler, they're typically very tall and you have to make sure that the case is tall enough or has enough depth to actually fit the cooler. So another thing to think about is if you're doing an AIO, the actual size of the cooler. So you have 120 mil, 240 mil, 360, and it just goes up from there. The case has to actually fit those parts. So obviously if you have a 240 mil cooler, you need to make sure the case supports 240 in the front, the top, the bottom, wherever. And obviously if it says it supports 240 up top, Matt and I have had many times where even though it supports it, it's kind of like an in type deal because the RAM might be too tall. If you have a really fancy RAM with tall heat sinks, it might not fit. Sometimes the motherboard BRMs have coolers on them that will hit. So we always recommend going with the smallest possible cooler or the biggest case so that you can make sure all that stuff fits and it fits well and you don't have to worry about you know, doing all these weird things. Matt and I have had to modify many cases by drilling holes and whatnot to actually fit the coolers. Another thing to keep in mind is the actual mounting hardware. You can just simply go to the website, check the back of the cooler box, make sure it supports that socket. So for example, Intel 1700 socket is out and a lot of the old coolers out there, well not old, but the ones that we've been using, uh, they only support up to like 1200 or 1333. So you have to make sure that they actually support the proper mounting of Intel, Ryzen, Xeon, whatever. And if you wanna see us fail numerous times, watch our Twitch streams. I feel like half the time we do a build, there's either a compatibility issue or a fitment issue. Not a word, but we like to use that word here. And the last big topic that comes with coolers, because there's a lot of things that can go wrong with coolers, is TDP. Making sure that your cooler can actually keep up with the CPU heat dissipation. So an example would be like, a lot of coolers will say 95 watt TDP. You don't wanna put that on an old, FX, you know, AM3 plus 9590 that's 220 watts because it will not keep it cool. So just keep that in mind as well. Now the next thing is motherboard size inside a case. Now, whether you buy a full ATX, a micro ATX, or a mini ITX, or EATX, all the different form factors of motherboards out there, you gotta find the right case for that motherboard. Now, yes, you can get a full ATX case and fit anything from a full ATX to a micro ATX to a mini ITX. It'll look kinda goofy because you have a really small motherboard in there, but you can't go the other way around. You can't put a full ATX motherboard in a mini ITX build. You gotta make sure you get your 
compatibility right here. And that is a big problem that we have had before where you just get a case and you think it's compatible for a certain size board and then it doesn't fit right. One big example is the O11 Dynamic Mini. It actually supports full size boards, but it goes back to Jackson's things about coolers. If you use a full size motherboard, that top um, radiator mounting slot does not work. You just can't fit a 240 mil up there without heavy modification. So definitely, definitely, definitely read your case uh, description to make sure you're getting the right one for your motherboard. And now on a more technical side, there's something that you don't really see, and that is bottlenecking. That is not really a physical thing that your eyes can see unless you're just looking at the FPS. You know, you can't just hold up a graphics card and a CPU and just go like, oh, there's gonna be a, a thin pipeline there that's gonna cause the PC to perform bad. It's really more of like a price to performance thing typically. So if you're gonna spend $300 on a CPU, that's a pretty nice CPU. You don't wanna spend 20 bucks on a graphics card from eBay because there's gonna be a bottleneck there. The CPU is gonna be performing up here, but that graphics card is gonna hold it back because that's the bottleneck. It's like the, the actual bottleneck where the liquid can't go any faster essentially. So we do recommend basically doing a price to performance thing. You know, if you buy a CPU for 200, I recommend getting a GPU in the 400 to I'd say $1,000 range at that point because like $200 is going to get you something like a Ryzen 5600G or an Intel 10400 and that can easily get you in the like 1660 all the way up to like an RTX 3080 range with minimal bottlenecking. And the last thing we want to touch on is wattages when it comes to power supplies. You can definitely make mistakes both ways when it comes to power supplies, getting too much wattage or too little wattage. The, the first one, too much wattage, really isn't a big deal. If you get a bigger power supply than you really need, you're just really wasting money you're not really hurting anything getting like a thousand watt for a really low end build while be it it's not the most economical decision it's not going to really hurt anything at all but if you do get too little wattage you can have some stability issues where the system either won't work at all or when you are under heavy load in certain games you have crashes so you definitely want to make sure to get a high wattage good rated power supply and make sure that the efficiencies are there for the system that you're building a good rule of thumb would be use like a good 80 plus bronze power supply for a budget build and if you step to something like a 3080 or 3090 be sure to get a good highly rated power supply with decent wattage normally like 850 watts or greater and uh, you will be good to go and to touch on that efficiency rating by the way does not equal quality necessarily now most of the time it does if you get an 80 plus gold or 80 plus platinum they're typically going to be like in the a s tier power supply category but obviously there's some 80 plus bronze power supplies out there that are considered to be like b tier and stuff like that all your efficiency is is just how efficient the power supply actually is so let's say you have a 400 watt 80 plus bronze and you guys can google all this stuff but essentially it just means you're not going to be wasting extra power so you're not going to be pulling like 480 watts when you should only be pulling 400 it basically is just better on your electric bill and also it can just be a little bit better quality parts because obviously when you have a high efficiency rating you have tighter tolerance resistors tighter tolerant capacitors etc it's just better stuff typically so hopefully this video was informational for you guys. If you have any other questions, let me know down below. Any concerns with anything, let me know down below. Whatever it is, I just wanna to talk to you guys. Comment down below, tell me about He's it. A weirdo. But if you guys like these informative videos, we'll definitely consider doing more of them in the future and discuss different topics in PC hardware that you want our opinion on. And we will do that, maybe, if you guys like this video. It'll be bad opinions though. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's talking video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. So guys, that was a whole lot of information we just gave you, and some of that information might have just gone over your head, and you're like, wow, that is way too much stuff. Well, we do have quite the answer for you if you want to get your first PC without the hassle. PCBros.tech is our PC selling business. We sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, work laptops, a bunch of other stuff, and you can uh, pick them up today over at PCBros.tech or come in person. See you guys later. Goodbye.